Hello and welcome to the Blue Monday podcast. I have no script. I can't remember the intro. This is a three times weekly audio show. Um, on the lovely, wonderful happenings of Ipswich Town. Um, obviously, it's not Monday. We normally record on a Sunday night for Monday. It's Wednesday and David Diamond is here with me. This only happens, Dave, on special occasions. Um, <clears throat> does anyone care how you are? I was going to ask, how no are you? Gives, but does no anyone, anyone care it. today? Dave, how no are you? Just, just, oh, well, you look very I'm very well, today. thanks. Yeah, I've been out. As you said, I spoke to you earlier. I was gridlocked in Roadworks in Southend. Are you exaggerating? My, was it actually gridlocked? my way through. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Got <laughs> through and um, got to the office. Left early, I thought. Got to leave early tonight because it's up Ransom's Way near the Suffolk Showground. First round, first day of the Suffolk Show. No traffic, mate. Traffic light, lighter than usual. And at the Suffolk Show this morning, on the stand, <laughs> Ipswich Town chief that executive um, Ian Milne was walking around, Dave. And what was he telling everybody? He was telling us of a new appointment of a new manager. Wow, how long have we been waiting for this? How, when was the uh, when, was, when was the flounce by the previous manager after the, the Barnsley game? Was the Thursday before Good Friday, so I want to say, and Easter was early, so March the. 30th. It'd have been a Thursday, Dave, would it? It'd have been a Tuesday night game, wouldn't it? That Barnsley. Oh, the flounce, the flounce, and then it was announced. The actually, yeah, the, the flounce. Oh, right, okay. But then when the day actually went, when we did when we did the impromptu pod, right. was I think the Thursday before Good Friday. Yeah, good point. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's been, wow, yeah, nearly two months. Two months of searching. So um, the lovely Ipswich Town Twitter feed has basically been full of people trying to guess what the hell's going to happen. But to be fair to Marcus Evans, he's done exactly what he said he was going to do. He said he was going to do a long interview process, speak to people. He said we were going to try something new. And he said we'd have an appointment by the end of May. Good to his word, Dave. He was spot on, as he said that day in his uh, in his interview. Um, I mean, obviously, much much over speculation over the last few weeks. It oh looked, my god! It looked what ten days ago that that Jack Ross was a shoe in, as they say. He's now um, <laughs> got the biggest jumped, budget ever in League One, according jumped, to Stuart jumped Donald. Into, yeah, jumped into the fire that is Sunderland. However, Sunderland have now got new owners, um, so hopefully. Well, you know, good luck to him. Um, so we, we, we never got involved in all this chit chat, did we, Dave, on the pod? We left it. Um, as I yeah. as I remember, um, the first guy to get linked was Steve McLaren. Is that right? Yeah. He's, he's, which, uh, it's QPR? Yeah, and he's gone to QPR. Yeah, he's replaced <laughs> Holloway, hasn't he? Then, yeah, I, then I it did went think into, remi- um, on, Then it went into kind of Lampard and... Gerard, quite quite heavily Gerard for a few days. Did, um, I, yeah. d- I just don't know whether these were all just. Um, have you seen that film where someone just creates a rumor out of nothing? Where, where Chinese, whether there was anything, Chinese whispers, yeah, or anything in any of these. But you're right. The heaviest link was Jack Ross. I mean, there's a point. If we say, if we're saying that Ross has jumped into the fire, Christ Almighty, Steve Gerard for his first ever management role has jumped into a cauldron for god's sake rangers i mean could there be a harder job for god's sake but look um i think from what we understand he impressed the owner i think lampard did from what we understand um obviously and in fairness to the owner that's a bit bit odd yesterday that this all came out i suppose would it be sour grapes from the ceo of shrewsbury i don't know said that oh technically we've made an illegal approach Um, the the club have denied that haven't they ipswich have denied that it was an illegal approach yeah, um, it does. It, it does it seem odd, does it not? I don't know that the day after the playoffs, obviously, the things just come to a head. So it looks like we've perhaps used um, some dignity, maybe dignity or I don't know, call it what you want. That, you know, we've obviously waited to like he's obviously we've spoken to his agent. Well, the playoff build up to the playoffs has been going on and everything was there ready to be ready to be signed and sealed once the playoff was. And I guess either way. And um I know we've just moaned about people speculating, but the speed in which it's been done that you just mentioned and the fact that um, Evans was keen to not offer to anybody else. Do you think this has been planned for for a while? You would think he had a you would think he had a short list, don't you? You really think he had a short list of 
I don't know, obviously had a load of applicants, a short list, I don't know, half a dozen, four, five of the ones we know. Who, who knows who he spoke to? Who knows who he interviewed? The ones perhaps that we have on good authority that the club have broke, um, the news that have broken was certainly Ross. It would appear Lampard, I think Gerard. Um, anyone else you can remember? I, none none no, of the I others mean, come to so, mind. Me. So look, so bored of you, it, know, though, you so know, so obviously this guy. This guy, from when McCarthy went, this guy was in the betting straight away, wasn't he? He was always hovering around the top, like, like top four or five. So, yeah, let's see. Um, youngish guy, 43, although Stat did the, as usual, Stat did a great Should I read that now of, so we don't forget? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good stat. Well, not that, oh, that sounds bad, not that all of Stat's, aren't, uh, all of Stat's stats are good, obviously. So, Statman has been in touch. Uh, by my reckoning, despite being only 43... Paul Hurst is the third most experienced manager we've appointed behind the previous manager and Joe Royal upon games managed when taking the hot seat. So oh. he's both young and experienced. Experience. But g- going back to my point, Dave, you do you think Beans they were basically able to do it in a day and a half after the playoff final that he'd the already... Wheels was- the wheels were set in motion some days ago, clearly. So, um, and what is your what is your view on the on the good? I mean, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, in the in the in the Evans interview, the owners' interview of what early last month was it? I think. Um, I don't like I don't like talking about that. Everyone destroyed uh, me after I didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, and <laughs> quite quite rightly so. Um, um, yeah, or, yeah. We'll, we'll get on to Richard Wright and Paul Cooper in a minute. No. Um, what was I going to say? He said it was going to be, they were going to go for a quite a sort of departure, really, didn't they? It was going to be looking at things from a new, I can't remember the words he used. No, but, but you're on the right. Yeah, you're on the but right. But you know side, what yeah. I mean. So, yeah, youngish manager, obviously with assist, with an even younger assistant. He's only 37, he's assistant, Chris Doig. Um, I think it's a good, look, I think it's a good appointment. I think anyone we spoke of before, anyone that, that, that gets the job, we know. Well, just by looking at McCart, looking at sorry, the previous manager. Now he's going to get time. He's going to get back in, and he will get the crowd on side. And my only hope is, and I know you've said this more than once, is look, give the guy a break, give the guy time, you know. Um, and let's hope come the come the beginning of the season, we just just get all our players out on the pitch for goodness sake. Yeah, yeah. especially the midfield players. I seen seen a picture of Joe Garner today, which made me think, oh, Joe Garner, he's a good, he's good at football, isn't he? Yeah. Well, we again we spoke about this, and you you I mean, just moving on to sort of like the tactics, and you said he quite likes. Uh, well, I don't know what was he playing a four three two one or something. What, what uh, was he? Th- he was playing a four two three one with. A, sorry, sorry with to say four two three one. Um, and we spoke about this. You know, we had a quick chat yesterday, and he said, yeah, but four two three one. You know, that would mean perhaps Garner and or Garner and or Waghorn perhaps not featuring in that. Well, and we both said straight away. Well, you know, I think our strongest team contains both of those, doesn't it? I think I put the shout out for questions. I think we're gonna get we're gonna get onto that, Dave. Just yeah, sure. A, just a quick more bit more about his history. So the guy has never managed at this level before, but has promotions at three separate clubs. Yeah, I mean um, he was he was Ilkeston, Ilkeston Town, Boston, um, Boston, Boston, and, and uh, Grimsby. Eventually, Grimsby took them up. They beat Forest Green in 2016, I think. Um, so he took them up via the. Um, by the playoffs, um, his uh, yeah had a bit of a part in the way with his assistant, whose name escapes my minor. It's a daily a bit of an Ipswich link. The Grimsby job he took over from Neil Woods, an old okay. forward of ours. Um, so there's some pedigree there, and obviously when he took over at Shrewsbury, it's, they were uh, what, October, so 18 months ago, just a bit over. They were bottom of League One. Um, so in 18 months, he's taken them to the cusp. Of the um, so, yeah, of, you know, eight, promoting to the championship, eighty-seven points. So not like not like a playoff with seventy-five points. No, 80, no, it's eighty-seven. A yeah, nearly. yeah. And I didn't notice how how much did they miss out on automatic buy? I didn't really notice. I don't know. I think Wigan and Blackburn were both I promoted think away, weren't they? Yeah, they're a couple of away. weeks. Yeah, I did a little bit of digging. He played in. Um, he has played against us. Um, uh, he played in. The, what, he, what position did he play? I think he was. I think it was. I'm sure he was a defender, but maybe he's got, got to be a fullback. Holding, yeah, defender. Five I mean, feet four yeah, or something. he played. Um, they doubled us in 2002-3, um, which was our first season down, and he actually played the most probably well two games he played in 2003-4. Um, 
He didn't, I don't believe he played the game at Portman Road, but he played in that, I just describe it as the Jermaine Wright volley game. Oh, okay, Mil- yeah. And um, he played in a 4-3 game in 2004-05, the ding-dong affair at Portman Road back then, as they all were under Royal, really. Yeah. So, yeah, he's, um, and then, I mean, yeah, great servant to Rotherham, 438 games between, in 15 seasons, 93 to 2008. Brief spell him- at Burton on loan and then straight into management. That would put him 6th or 7th for us, wouldn't it, in appearances? That would be up there. 4 yeah, 3 yeah, yeah. that's huge, isn't it? Yeah. Four three eight. sorry. Yeah. Oh, four three eight. sorry. But yeah. still up there. Um, look, I, I see it as a good sign, and I think that the owner's been true to his word. When he said a departure, it's not a McLaren, it's not a Holloway, it's not a Pardew, it's not a McCarthy. So, should yeah. We to, should we go to some questions then, Dave? Mm. Um, this is from, uh, it just says, town fan. Um do you think we can expect a few of Paul's players like John Nolan to become targets for us? Yeah, I didn't watch all of the game at the weekend. Um, and I was speaking to someone that did, well, you obviously were there. And they said, yeah, out of the out of the crop, I think actually it could have been you that said it, out of the crop of players that played, he was, he's the most likely, not the most likely to come, but he would be the one you'd sort of fancy the most perhaps. Yeah, so he was... Um, an- we're going to praise you this, Dave. I've seen Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury, sorry, play once, so I'm yeah, not going to course. claim you, to at know... Wembley in a playoff final. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm not going to claim to know everything, but he was, um, he was a number ten, Dave, as in an advanced playmaker, neat and tidy, mm-hmm. neat and tidy on the, neat and tidy on the ball. Um, mm-hmm. I would say he looked like their most valuable player, although, um, their goalkeeper had a great game. Obviously, saved a penalty. Uh, Dean Henderson on loan okay. from Manchester United and of course there may be an opening for a lone goalkeeper next season so possibly even ahead of Nolan if he does need to replace you like the look of him yeah um I well he had a, he had a good game and he's obviously, obviously going to um, be well trained if he's from Manchester United Man so. you've also got obviously the Villa keeper out on loan as yeah. well then haven't they Johnson. yeah so yeah they've they've got a litany of good goggles but I would think that one would be more likely because um, from my point of view although Nolan um, looked a good player in Ipswich's squad do you need really attacking fit. midfielder players? Yeah, no, not, when not, when they're, not when they're all fit um, although I would I, I don't know how he played well, I think you, you did give me a heads up how he played not great but I would like to see the wonderfully named Omar Beckles which is a superb name I think he was a um, a left back built like a centre back absolute unit of a unit of a man I don't want anyone getting in Miles Kenlock's way though um, but uh, yeah, you're, you're up for him aren't you if you if you're going to go down the 3-5-2 route and you want a guy who can play either position centre half centre yeah. half or well we've got one of those at the moment haven't we there you go to a, to a degree so I don't know whether he's got anything there better than we've got Okay. Already. Yeah. Um, uh, let's move on. Uh, Harry, where can you see Paul Hurst taking us in the next three years? <laughs> I, I think if if we can get if and it's a big if, if we can get our players fit, especially the midfield players, um, and keep that squad together. I think the goalkeeper is a bit of a key, although you know keepers are perhaps he, well, yeah the goalkeeper is a bit of a key. Yeah, we should be looking next season. If we can get those players out playing regularly, we should be looking next season, certainly at top 10. I can't see why not. Um, and then from, you know, you can consolidate in top 10 and then take it from there, really, don't you? Well, the thing is, if you do finish top 10, you know that Waghorn's value has gone up again and yeah, probably Dazelle's value has gone up. Yeah. And we just need to be in a point where some of the players have at least got some resale value so you can then... You yeah, know, build, as build Burley did. There. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is Jax. Uh, do you think some of the senior members are going to think he is inexperienced? Also, does he need some help on the transfers due to not being at this level before? Um, a bit of both, really. You'd think he's going to get, you know, there are good people left at the, still left at the club. You know, look at, you know, Klug still there, for goodness sake, who, um, you know, who took over from Mick at the end of the season. Um no, you'd think he'll have advisors there. But he'll know. Crikey, OK, he's only League One. He's only one step below. And you're not telling me, you know, he's a, he's a League One manager just missing out on promotion um, and, miss, um, well, just missing out on automatic, albeit, but missing out on the playoffs. 
that he doesn't know the championship know fairly though. well, yeah. Ben. Yeah. Um, what about the experienced players? How are Chambers and Skews particularly going to going to take to him? Two <laughs> fine professionals. Well, I've just seen. I've just read, and I had a chance to see TWTD today. I've just Skews has Skews has come out, and you know, and and you know, it seems that he's the one that the club has put forward to comment on it, and he's, yeah, obviously, uh, talking it up. Oh, you'd think they would, um, you'd think they would embrace it, and I would assume that um, as far as Chambers is concerned, he may, may well have played with Chris Doig, who played at Forest. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, this is Remy. Um, if Paul Hurst gets us in or near the playoffs in the first season, do you think we risk, we risk excuse me, losing him to a lower position Premier League club? His well, career trajectory to date would suggest yes, right. No, I'd say not first season, no. No. Um... And also, and you, I know we're going to get a classic diamond answer for this one. Is Paul Hurst small or Chris Doig massive? <laughs> say it. What? Uh, bit of both. What? <laughs> say, say bit of both. I see what you mean. Bit, bit of, both. of both. Yeah, I, of both. I, I, right. Okay, sorry. I threw that went, went up, went past me. Go um, on. This is Rob. Uh, do you think Marcus Evans has won the fans over in the last few months? Uh, what we've getting rid of Mick, the interview, and now appointing a young, ambitious manager like Paul Hurst. Can I take that one, Dave? You can. Um, I think he has. I think when you go back to um, the previous season, we, you know, where Murphy is sold and Leon Best comes in, and you take it from last summer, and you yeah. have Hughes, Garner, Waghorn, Selena all arrive, followed by Connolly. And yeah. then you have... Uh, the season tickets coming down and the admission that the prices shouldn't have gone up. And yeah. then you have the interview and then you have the way that the previous manager was kind of ushered out. And then you have disappointment. I don't think his stock's been higher since he was throwing money at Paul Jewell. Dave, what do you think? I think you're quite right. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, but, and what will, there is a, you know, there is a factor that will show that, which would be ticket sales, I guess. Yeah, I wonder, let me, uh, this is not on Twitter. Do you think there'll be a spike this coming week? I would think so. Yeah, I mean, I, even I've spoken to one or two people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this they said, is, right, that's it. Buy me a ticket again. This is George. Um, how do you think the squad will react to the appointment? That's a bit similar answer to Chambers and Skews, really. But, what about someone... You know, a new, a, new, yeah, a new manager comes in, new coach. You want to impress him, don't you? And I you know, guess... You, and I'm not saying some of the squad had it easy under McCarthy. I'm not saying that at all. But, um, of course, yeah, you've got almost got... A, with a new coach, surely you've almost got to try again and impress him. You know, McCarthy, you know, I will use his name, um, knew the old players inside out, for goodness sake. So it's down to the players to impress the new coach, surely. And you're just wondering with people like Knudsen possibly... Bielkowski, depending on where the previous manager winds up, whether certain of them might be wanted in the future as well. Well, you know, certainly the goalkeeper will, won't he? he, he we've, we've already discussed this. Our two most saleable assets at the moment is is Waghorn and and, and Bart. Um, yeah, let's yeah let's hope um, let's hope we start the season with both. Um, this is a bit similar to Remy's one. This is Alex. What can we realistically expect from his three years? Do you think he'll last? the three years um and if he doesn't is that because he'll be poached by someone in line of what's happened before they take the um the unique part of that question do you think he'll last the three years um going on our track record and the track record of the owner you'd have to i wouldn't give a definitive yes but you'd have to say it would be more a yes you know a higher percentage that he would because we do the owner has got a a track record of backing back in managers um and if he does get poached by someone else so that would mean he's doing quite well with us so that would mean good you know good well, news for us i think there's a number there if he finish he has to finish fourth or above for someone to want to poach definitely him. do you yeah. know what i mean yeah. so yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah. i think that's the yeah. number um yeah. this is mullet who we know yeah. was was a big fan of the previous manager do you sorry do the footballing similarities with the previous manager, worry you or inspire you, given the difference is personality. Seen it? I, I couldn't say. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I mean, I've heard, I've heard both sides of that. I mean, 
you saw the, yeah again you saw a playoff match on set on on sunday um i saw a brilliant free kick routine i know that but look you know put <laughs> that, that could have been one of the coaches though couldn't it not exactly not put that to hers, one side I, I don't know how pragmatic he is. Is, is is you know is he is he playing that well, you saw how he set up on. You saw how he set up on. It was, um, yeah, it was four Sunday. two three one two sitting midfielders. What I would say was different to the way our previous manager played the three is they were all midfielders. They weren't forwards go. playing out of, oh, out yeah, of out position. position. They were yeah. they were round pegs in round. There you go. He did have a big bruiser up front, Carlton Morris. But this is league. Mm. This is League One, Dave. Oh, so did Roth- so did Rotherham. Yeah, you've got to. I, I bet you've Blackburn did and Wigan did as oh, well. But Wigan had. Will Griggs, didn't they? Um, so what my hope is, is that someone who's come through coaching, he's a, he's a different generation now, whether he'll be more attuned to, because let's be honest, if the previous manager still really had his finger on the pulse of of coaching, wouldn't we have finished higher up than 16 for 12 <laughs> the past two you'd, seasons? You'd, you'd hope so, really. You'd hope so. Yeah, yeah. Let's just hope, as we've all said, let's just hope that we give him a, you know, everyone gives him a, gives a, gives a bloke a chance, really. But um, in, in response to Mullet, though, Dave, it's it's not going to be like Slavisa Jukanovic or Nuno Santo, but no. who, but who else did that in the championship last no year? One. Um, no one. No, 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 And then who else has been? Who else has got the personnel to do that? No one. It's, it's only Brentford did that who don't have a, big, yeah. don't have a big budget. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah. look, who's to say? And I still said last season, if we'd have had right fit, you know, fit and raring, not saying it had played right through the season, and Andre Dezel and uh, Emir Hughes right through the season, we would have played differently. I'm sure we would have done. OK. Um, is Hurst likely to replace Mick Stockwell in the half pint hero stakes? That's, <laughs> you have to go a long way to. Uh, Less, yeah, I know that would Mick be, Stockwell. I mean, what, 600 and. 690 games, sorry, stat, 601, whatever it was. Ridiculous. Um, this is Heaven's Knight, who comments on a lot of my YouTube videos, so I know he's not trolling. Um, okay. He says, the general consensus seems like Hurst is the second coming of Christ or something. I'm concerned, though, a young McCarthy is still a McCarthy. Age doesn't equate greatness. I thought we were taking a different route. Isn't this more of the same? What's your response to that, Dave? I don't think it is. I don't think it is because more of the same would have been a would have been an you know one of those type managers. Look, look they're out. They're all out there now. And Allardyce, I'm not saying he would have got him, but an Allardyce, a Moyes, a McLaren, a Pardew. That to me is more of the same of that generation. This is a you know what, what's McCarthy? Fifty nine, knocking on sixty. This this guy's forty three. He's got an assistant with him who's thirty seven. It is a different generation. Okay. As you quite rightly said. Uh, this is Matty. Um, what formations and style of play can we expect? What sets him aside from other contenders? Can we just say, I'm basing that thinking he's going to play 4-2-3-1 on watching one game. I would like to think oh. this guy is smart enough to walk I- in and say, right, Martin Waghorn is one of my best players. And hang on a minute, I've got a really good target man. I need to play two up front. He could ditch that within days of seeing Garner and Waghorn, couldn't he, Dave? Yes, he could. Ben, how did Rotherham set up more interestingly? Rotherham set up 4-4-2, um, quite Ferguson-like 4-4-2, aggressive um, 4-4-2, big guy up front with uh, like a number 10, like a mm-hmm. Sheringham type um, mm-hmm. guy come, coming behind him. So proper, just, oh, so, you really loved it, old school 4-4-2. So there you go. So our previous manager probably would have gone the same and matched up, wouldn't he? Yes, but because he had three midfielders behind the front, he didn't have anybody okay. to put. Yeah, good point. To put to put further up. So okay. I don't know whether we'll see. You'd like to think this guy is going to be smart, pragmatic, and if he thinks it's a three at the back squad, it's a it's a three at the back. You know that he'll play. Well, um, I think that's a quite a good thing about our squad. You know, again. <laughs> When everybody's fit, it's, it's it's quite flexible, isn't it? We've got the we've got the personnel pretty much now to play several different formations, haven't we? And also, Dave, Vidra for Derby top scored the whole championship playing in the ten position but in, in a four two three in a, one in an advanced ten, yeah. 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 So, I mean, look, if he does, so who go... could be? Okay, here's the thing. Who could be that player for us at the w- current w- squad? W- Wacom. That would be Wacom. Yeah. yeah. Um, this yeah. is the only thing is that um, it just you've you've got two good forwards, I think. Um, and the other question as well, Dave, is 
Hughes, a deep line playmaker, <laughs> a box to box midfielder. We don't know. We haven't seen enough of him. Ben. That's 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 the other question. Do we really know that? We haven't seen him play enough games. Over so, two seasons. Yeah. So if I really th- haven't seen him, if yeah. I'm thinking about building Look, up a midfield, I don't know whether I'm playing Hughes as a box to box next to Skews we, or whether I'm pushing. We him saw him on. play. We saw him play Villa away. Me and you saw it season before last, didn't we? And he didn't touch the ball for 20 minutes. Then on, he was probably the best player on the park. When he, what a great goal he scored! And you know, once he sort of like um, grew into that, grew into that sort of box to box position, he was superb, wasn't he? You know, remember the goal against Newcastle? Like, you know, there's a there's a player there, but because of his, he's because he's barely played in the two seasons he's been here. I wouldn't be sure. There's a there's a really good player there, but what his best position within the midfield is, I don't know. And you know, this is a big season if he's fully fit, and it looks like hopefully, fingers crossed, he will be. Potentially a very big season for Dazelle once he gets back, uh, you know, yeah, in the well, swing of things. That's exactly it. Because if you have a a Madison situation that that Norwich had last year, you get to February and you're like this this youth team guy. You're building your you're building your your team around him now. So mm-hmm. I I think in answer to the question formations and style of play, I think the previous manager has not left an obvious. Oh no, we've got four four two players. There's two no, no, there's hasn't. two wide midfielders, no. or you know, there's a definite Ben. Ben, you know, towards the end of the season, because of the injuries that he had, uh, to be fair to the the old manager, he had to he had to go with what he had, didn't he? Yeah, I I know I'm regressing, but Sunderland when he lined up and he actually let them the three of them yeah. play, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, what sets him aside from other contenders, I think, is the three promotions, isn't it? I think so. In the experience, I mean, look. From what we understand, Gerard and Lampard, that would have been a gamble. That would have been a gamble. Who knows? You know, um, it appears it appears that I don't know if it's been announced yet. I was listening on Talk Sport this morning. It appears that Lampard might be on his way to Derby. And interestingly, taking Jody Morris with him, who's who's been fantastic. I mean, Chelsea, well, Chelsea should win it anyway. But I think Chelsea under 18s or the 20s that he works with have carried all before them. And he's acknowledged as being one of the bright young things in coaching. So he's... Um, and Gerard's gone with Gary McAllister, I think, to Rangers. So again, taking the experience. But those two massive gamble. Scott Park are the same. Um, and Ross, well, you know, Ross, <laughs> the thing he had against him, yes, outstanding with St Mirren on a low budget, but never been involved with English football. Totally different. Totally different. Yeah, just a um, totally cliche. Totally different game, but yeah, totally different animal, so to speak. This is MJ. Um, formation we've already discussed, and we think he just needs to have a Suss look. Out. He, Suss I think, it out. I think yep. if he's smart, he lets the squad dictate the formation. Unless yep. he has a very firm philosophy, in which case, then he he needs to sell people. If it, do you know what I mean? If he's got the wrong players for his We don't know Ben, do we? To... We don't know. I mean, again, in the in the owner's interview last month, he sort of intimated that it would be a similar budget. Oh, of course it will, yeah, yeah. To what to what the outgoing manager had. So yeah, let's see. Uh, You're right. Um, where would you like him to strengthen? <laughs> um again, that's a <laughs> That's a difficult one. That's a difficult one as well. I mean, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd have said at full back, but then you've got Emmanuel coming. But by the way, how did he play? Fine. Didn't have. Didn't have, they? They were attacking for a lot of the game. He didn't. He wasn't pinned up against a you know a high left uh, okay. midfielder or a four three winger. three type. Yeah, flying wing. Then it's, it's it's a difficult one now because when you look at when you look at the squad and you get everybody fit, we said this last season. There's pretty much cover everywhere, isn't there? Other than for skews. Yeah, that yeah, that particular yeah. a, a real that holding, holding yeah. out and out holding midfielder. Yeah, um, and I think, as you said before, to bring a fit Hughes back and use him in that position, I think would be a waste actually. Yeah. So yeah, you don't. So you don't yeah, know. that's a good point. Yeah, he's you not getting any right younger. Back, he might he might phone Josh Emmanuel tomorrow and say, "I've watched you all season. You're my right back next season." Yeah. Yeah, might, yeah, you know, and then there's cover there with Spence, and yeah, yeah, and and obviously the lad who, um, what's his name, the um, Costa, Costa. Who, yeah, yeah, young another, lad, another, who's another really centre half. I mean, the, the thing with this Graham Blackburn always used to point this out, Dave, that all our centre backs got injured, so we had no our centre back cover got exposed. Then all our centre midfielders got injured. So <laughs> right what about, um, what yeah, about another centre back? I would front, say perhaps front left of the team. 
Or can Falami and Waco uncover all of that? You think so? You think so? And don't forget, you know, Sears showed what... I know it was only the final two games, but Sears really showed what he was about those final two games, didn't he? It just shows what he can do. It does. We'll see. Um, Mrs. Nuts, following your early earlier respair tweet, are you both feeling the respair? So I retweeted Susie Dent of Countdown saying about the word respair, and I can't ah. remember the exact, the the exact meaning, meaning but... Uh, being relief relief from despair, I think. So oh, I'm, I like that. Oh I'm, yes. I'm feeling a sense of respair, Dave. Are you? I'm feeling I'm feeling a lot of respair then. Um, this is Yane. Um, what do you think about this view? And he screenshotted. Um, so after all that, Ipswich are going to appoint the closest match out there to Mick McCarthy. Same value, same football, same outspoken nature. When really? he works, goes underappreciated. It's all there except he's from Sheffield rather than Barnsley. They are not. Yane's words, by the way, he's and w- w- oh, he's pulled them. Is that is that just the binary, the 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 blackest of black and white views there, Dave? I think so. He's a, he was a def, you know from what, he was a defender. He's a Yorkshireman. Yes. Um, this is Chris Rand. Lots of mentions of inexperience, but I think in his career, Hurst has already managed for over 500 games. Statman mentioned this. I think that's about the same as quote experienced Paul Jewell and. He came to town and four times as many as Jack Ross. Um, this is Tom. Will the potential style of football be a problem for the fans or was it just McCarthy's attitude towards the end? Yeah, that's what tipped the scale. That's what tipped the scales, wasn't it? It was his attitude. It was his attitude towards the fans. It was how he, he basically... Look, the fans lost all... Re- the majority of the fans lost all respect for McCarthy. One after what happened at Norwich. All right, that was... But what he did or what he didn't do, but just how he went about it, how he went about press conference and thing towards the end, it just got ridiculous. So yes, the style of football was one thing, but that was that was the catalyst, really, wasn't Dave, it? Can I just say um, the the problem is pragmatic football, not direct football. Alex Ferguson mm. played direct football for ben, twenty years. I I don't look, uh, I watched Millwall <laughs> ten times last year and they were thoroughly entertaining playing. Direct well, I football. think what 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 got my got me every time and I know we we banged on about this on and on and on about the pod is is that he was he was so reactive rather than proactive. You know he would not right. This is how I'm going to play. This is especially at home and especially against and Bert, I'm not against Burton. the likes of Villa. Not Bert, against the likes. Yeah, the, good God, you know this is how I'm going to play. I'm going to play with one up front. Uh, they could play four two two four three three. Just we're going to deal with that because we're good enough. And he wouldn't, you know. That was what got. I think that's what certainly got me, and I think got the majority of the fans. And, and that away, is away that from is, away from home. Oh, it was saying, dire, wasn't it? Oh, well, you saw most of it. Yeah, it was awful. Well, there was that spate of just bit it being really tight and losing one nil at Bristol Bristol and at Brentford. When I saw perhaps QPR, I mean, yeah, we were fortunate enough to see Reading, um, which was very much an anomaly. Can't say that word. Um, (laughs) Yeah. uh, Out of ordinary for the season. Uh, This is Simo, who we met in Bristol, Dave. Um, What positions do you think we need to strengthen? Kind of covered that. that. Formation? Kind of covered that. Any money to spend, Dave? Do you think that all comes from Bielkowski? Yeah. Um, From what we understand, Ben, yeah, I think yeah, the money again will go on. Um, any new signings will be, um, it will be um, out of contract, freebies and or um, loans and wages. Can I just say the spine of his team, um, Henderson, Godfrey and Morris were all loan players um, for yeah, Shrewsbury. No, two Norwich two, players. Two Norwich and one and one Man U. Yeah. yeah. So he knows how to work the work the loan market. Yeah. yeah. Um, where do you think? He will finish, Dave. What? What do you think the town will finish next season? Yeah. Get all the players. Get all the players fit. Um, and like I said, I think a lot will depend on the goalkeeper. If he goes, getting a new keeper in, settling him in. Um, I see no reason if we can get all those players fit. Top ten. Um, this is Ipswich and a new era. Um, what should Hurst deal with year one to give the squad flexibility and cover gaps recognizing the squad will develop and evolve over a few seasons um let me just re- read you the first line again uh what should Hurst deal with in the first season to give okay. the squad flexibility i think he's got to manage the young players as it's some young squad there now especially you're, you're the right. midfield you're players totally right. downs nidem dizelle got to manage those players manage their game time um I, it'd have been really interesting to see last season 
Um, obviously, he was injured after the first 40 minutes for the rest of the season. How, how the manager would have handled Dezel last season. But I, I think, you know, you need, you need to look after those players. They're still young. Um, but look, again, you've got the squad with Hughes, Adeyemi, as it, as it is, Skews. You've got the squad to perhaps do that and rotate accordingly. OK, uh, Jules, uh, great appointment. Fingers crossed. Number one, first transfer new goalie because Bart will be on his way. Or do you, This is a good one. Um, if Bart goes, can you just stick Gherkin in? I, I haven't got a problem with Gherkin. I really haven't. Have you particularly? Um, I mean, it's no? just that Bart's been so magnificent. <laughs> it's, it's just it's crazy. You know, you just wonder, you know, there will be life after Bart. In Context is all, though, Dave. I've got a problem with Gherkin if we get four million for Bart and none of it's invested in an outfield player. Then I've there got a problem with Gherkin. Yeah, well, I haven't not... got a problem with Gherkin if you... No. If you no. if you get a transfer fee for Bart and you get someone I mean, as good we, as as good as Waghorn for the transfer fee. I mean we probably need two keepers, don't we? Because if that happens, because Crow has gone, hasn't he? Crow got given a free. Who never appeared in the first team anyway, but he got he got let go. And I think the other young kid let, got let go. Hayes, I think the other reserve yes. um, young reserve keeper. Um, right, he's Harry Wright's still there, I believe. So we're short on keepers from day one, pretty much. Anyway. Okay. Um, this is Alistair. Um, this is practically, um, I tweeted that you were on the coming out of South Fan. This is practically an accidental partridge where David Diamond is on his way to Dundee eating a Toblerone. This is you sitting in the traffic. Um, <laughs> it's tricky eating a Toblerone. Okay. Eating a Toblerone, they, they hurt sometimes. If you get it at a wrong angle, they hurt, don't they? Um, That's eating one. I've got, <laughs> oh dear, I've got um, 20 new tweets. Um, only. Everyone's taking the mick out of my Paul Hurst song. Um, anyone from Shrewsbury, we can pinch. That's Sam. We've spoken about no. I think in terms of sign-ins, I agree with you that unless you get someone who's waghorn level, just put put Nidham in for God's sake. Put you know trust trust Dazelle and um... mate. We'll do well to make two. We'll do very very well to make two signings as good as Garner and Waghorn for the for reportedly the money we pay for them. If he's going to go three at the back, he should sign a dedicated centre half, shouldn't he? Yeah, probably. Because yeah, Chambers is Chambers isn't getting any younger, is he? For and when sake. did when did Smith go? It was February <laughs> or something. January, January, February, yeah, January, just after win, um, yeah, um, window, to, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I, that risk spare is a good thing. I, I, I agree with that. You know, you're kind of looking forward to it now, aren't you? You are. Where previous years, you know, certainly beginning of last season, oh God, you know, season ticket sales were dropped. It was a big cloud over the club even at the start of the season, wasn't it? Compounded by what happened to Dizelle, you know, great, great new hope, you know, compounded by what happened to him on the very first, well, very first game of the season, you know. It'd be nice, uh, to, get a, nice to get a home game first, first game, up. wouldn't it? And yeah. I think that would well, draw, draw a big audience if... A couple of weeks they'll be out, then you could be getting, we could begin plotting your season. Yeah, plotting my. What season. was the um? What was your final total? Sixty-five. Sixty. Yeah, sixty-four. If you count an e- the That's England a lot of complete boring England game I went to, um, yeah. I think sixty. Can't, can't sixty-five. That's... Um, what I was going to ask you, Dave, was um, this is the sixteenth manager now, and you probably can do at least half of them. How how do you feel about this appointment in relation to the previous manager and? Do you remember when Joe Royal got hired? It was all a little bit, oh, this is no good. You know, we, go, we yeah. can't have Joe Royal. How do you feel about this one in comparison with Jewel Royal? I, I think it was. I think it was a bit Jewel different. And... I think, uh, yeah, I think it was a bit different. I mean, Jilton was different. I mean, I think Jewel and Royal were different because they were known. They were really known at that level, weren't they? I mean, Royal Man City. Jewel had done it with Wigan. You know, they were well known at this level. This guy is. Um, yeah, a little bit different. I can't think. I'm just trying to think of a similar, similar, um, similar appointment. Um, John Duncan. Uh, I'm not saying it would turn out. Sorry, not saying it would turn out like that. But from a similar sort of level, really. I mean, obviously, Ferguson came from within. Robson came from sort of nowhere, really. Okay, Fulham. Um, yeah, it's, it, it is slightly different for us, I think. Don't you? Don't you think? Are you not hoping it's like a Graham Taylor? going from Lincoln to Watford. Oh, it would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. <laughs> it would. Um, look, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm full of hope. Um, and let's just, let's just see. 
yeah there we go i think that'll do us thank you everybody as usual for the questions follow us on twitter at blue monday um itfc now we have been delaying um the season review for this to happen so we've got a vague plan that we're actually going to do this in in multiple shows and we're going to try and um we're going to try and get Dave to do one. Might even get Statman to do one. Um, yep. Mikey's going to do one. And we think Joe might do one as well. So there will be some more more pods coming up. Um, I think we might get Dave's thoughts on the World Cup at some point, maybe after the, you know, prior to the tournament or... Can I just, before. just just on a World Cup, just changing subject from the championship. I know we perhaps sometimes don't really like to go off piece, but um, Gareth Bale's goal comments <laughs> i could yeah i could have, i reckon i could have given that a given that a pretty good but the but the poor keeper david lost the plot by that point oh, hadn't he i have been that first the keeper's goal, already thinking about the third the goal, you've, yeah. you've seen that uh, you know in all my years of watching football playing football at sunday morning level or de- reasonable standard on a saturday stuff like that i've never seen a goal like that i've never seen a goal like that um he was shot wasn't he he was absolutely Bless shot, him. and um, yeah, but I still think Zidane's goal's got the edge, don't you? Yeah. Shoot me down. Someone's going to really shoot yeah, me down now. I, I honestly I'm, do. I'm just, that. just that. I can still see that still of him, just his eyes on the ball as the cross came in, and he knew he was going to swivel him. But uh, anyway. And did, yeah. did that be good? Did Fulham, be good to do did Fulham the get their um, Wembley 2000 moment then? Yeah, I think. Deserved I mean, it, no, it was just the, you were there. I mean, it was just that summed up the goal. Just summed up Fulham, didn't it? Just yeah. that one sheer moment of class, you know, the awareness. The, that's a lovely pass, though. It's just a straight ball, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing. It's a straight ball and just the finish of Kenny. It, it, it was fitting, I suppose. If Fulham were going to win it, they're going to win it with a goal like that, you know. Having said that... You're going to miss think, the miss the trip to the Turkish restaurant in Putney, though, aren't oh, you? Oh, yeah. But I, I tell you, having said that, I think Fredericks was one lucky boy. Lucky boy. Um, he might not be signing yeah. a new contract with them, actually. So um, really, yeah. oh, he's gonna go. He's gonna go, well, no, go up. They are up, but yeah, someone will uh, will snap him up. I mean, yeah, you'd sooner them sell him sooner from their point of view, sell him rather than the other, um, rather than Cessignon. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, thank you everybody for listening. Um, more podcasts as and Whenever. when, as and when we, as and when we decide. Dave, I'll see you soon. Cheers, mate. Have a good one. <laughs>